Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all around the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. And I am so excited, you guys, because we have Sandra Champlain on with us this evening. Hey, Sandra, welcome. Hi, Julie. Thanks so much. I am so happy to be here. Oh, you guys, I'm a huge Sandra fan, and so she, for those of you that have been living under a rock and don't know who she is, she's the author of We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death, and she's the host of We Don't Die Radio, and I got to be on her show recently, and I I truly have been a fan of yours for many years, and we finally just got connected and got our schedules synced, and I thought, we had so much fun on your show, I thought it would be fun for you to be on my show and then to answer questions together from callers. I'm excited. It's been a long time since I've been on a live show, and I know you've got the best listeners, so I'm here. i got butterflies in my tummy, and I'm ready to go, so thanks All right. for having me. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Miss Sandra. She, for the last 20 years, she's been exploring the truth about life, death, grief, and what might lie beyond. Her deepest desire now is to empower people with the information she's gleaned and to provide tools and resources to help people find the path back to their own aliveness. That's a handful, girl. That's a mouthful there. And, you know, no pressure there. That's a that's a big ask for you to be helping people that are going through grief and afraid to die and all of that. So were you interested in spiritual things as a child? Were you raised? in a religious or spiritual home? What's the story on that? Well, we went to Catholic school, and we weren't spiritual or religious. Well, we were every Sunday, but it wasn't anything that really came to the house with us after church. So I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about death, the afterlife. I was just busy living life, and my dad was always someone who said, you have to see it to believe it. So this world of spirituality really occurred to me as kind of woo-woo out there, nothing I'd ever get involved with. So were you uh, trying to levitate girls at slumber parties like I did when I was a kid? And we, not that I, not that I, you know, initiated it. I didn't, but we never were able to do it. And then every once in a while we'd do a Ouija board. There was this movie channel in Columbus, Ohio, where I grew up, and it was in, on Saturday nights, they had this show called Chiller Theater, and it was like all the zombie movies and the scary movies, so we'd all watch those at slumber parties, and then we'd pick the lightest girl, the lightest weight girl in the group, which was never me, so I needed, I never needed to worry about it, and then we put our fingers under her and see if we could get her to levitate, <laughs> and it never worked. Did you do that kind of stuff, too? Do you remember that? We... We did. Not a lot of it, but we played around with it. And of course, we played yeah, some records yeah. backwards, you know, seeing if we could hear voices and things like that. Oh, oh my I God. How about that? I didn't even remember, Julie. <laughs> how funny. And did you ever play with a Ouija board? Um, not that I remember. I mean, vague, but it never made an impact. Because I really wasn't interested in that stuff. So yeah. for me to the messenger now talking about the afterlife was totally unpredictable, but it also makes me the perfect messenger. Well, we tried Ouija boards also at these slumber parties, and uh, we could never get it to work. <laughs> so that was my that was my interest. It sounds like yours was about the same. We were like, okay, oh, I don't know this stuff. They're they're just making this up, trying to sell these games and things. Oh my gosh! So tell us about what you did before. I know you've had a very interesting life. Tell us a little bit about what you did before you went on. This this quest to figure out if there's life after death and, and how it works, if in fact there is. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a trained chef, 
So I went to cooking school, graduated top of my class from the Culinary Institute of America back in old 1987 and went on to working restaurants and hotels and had a dream of having a restaurant someday. That didn't happen, but what did happen, well, a couple of things. I opened a coffee and chocolate store and had that for many years. And alongside of that, My mom was a travel agent for race car teams, and in racing, there are some what's called endurance races, 12-hour races, 24-hour races, and on this particular year, back in the late 80s, one of the teams needed a chef to cook for them. So I got my foot in the door, and out of that, my mom and I started a long career of running a catering business for race car teams. And unfortunately, we got nudged out of it when COVID hit the world because we could no longer have big groups of people under a tent. Um, But at that time, we were cooking for 1,000 to 1,500 people a meal at some of the biggest racetracks in the United States. So that's been my career. But Alongside of that, back in the mid-90s, Julie, I had a fear of dying, and that led me on a very secret path to getting some answers for myself just so I could sleep at night. And I came up with so much really good information, and I thought, you know, someday it would be nice if I told people about this, but between you and me and your listeners and viewers, I used to laugh at people that talked spiritual jargon, and the last thing I wanted to do was become one of these people because I thought I'd lose friends and family, so I didn't really talk about it. And then one day, my poor pop, my dad, got diagnosed with cancer, and five months later, he passed, and um, it was one of the most torturous times ever with a lot of grief lot of miscommunications between my siblings and I, and just, it was awful, the lowest point of my life. And he did pass, and I went through a really deep, dark time that lasted a long time. And instinctively, I wanted to find out why does grief have to hurt so bad, and and really, why do healthy, normal people become such monsters with rage and miscommunication and all that? And so I uncovered this world of grief and why we go through it and what happens. And I decided to just put a public service announcement out. I recorded an audio called How to Survive Grief and just put that out on Facebook and wherever else I could, social media. And it went viral. And within a few months, the emails that I was was getting from people, and then, Julie, the biggest thing was that really flipped the switch that I needed to be on loudspeaker about my mission was people started reporting they chose not to take their own life because of my words. And I felt I had a moral responsibility. How do I get what I know out to the most amount of people? And I thought if I had the courage to talk about the afterlife and what I learned title my book, We Don't Die, which is a quite in-your-face title, (laughs) and slide in Chapter 10, How to Survive Grief. And then you know how synchronicities happen. One thing, you know, I meet a publisher, pitch the idea, and the book is almost 10 years old and impacting tons of lives. So I answered more than you asked me, but I just was on a roll. (laughs) No, it's perfect. I, I find it fascinating about the people saying that you gave them enough information that it kept them from taking their own lives. My goodness, if that's not a sign from heaven that you're on the path to help people, I don't know that if there is one. And I get a lot of those emails as well, not so much about that I didn't take my own life, but about people who get so much comfort in reading about how we're all surrounded by angels and deceased loved ones and all of that. So back a little bit, by the way, you guys, every time I talk to Sandra, I always ask her what's for dinner (laughs) because I I cook, not because I enjoy it because I have to, but I always, don't I, I always say, okay, what's for dinner tonight? Because I'm always thinking, oh, if she was close by, I'd be at your house every night for dinner and then bring a, bring a, uh, a plate of food home for Tim, for my husband. I'd probably let him come with us, oh. come with me sometimes. Yeah. So we made a nice 
big pot of chicken soup. I'm here with my mom. Nice big chicken soup with fresh veggies and a little bit of Chardonnay she had. I'll have some after the interview. (laughs) Oh, good. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you're not sloppy here for the interview. That's a good thing. Well, so back to your dad. You lost your dad, and then you were dealing with a profound amount of grief, it sounds like. So how did you get started in this quest to find out if, in fact, there was an afterlife? What were were the first things that you researched? Yeah, it happened long before Dad passed. Like I said, the mid-90s, and he passed 2010. The first thing um, that happened is I met a really cool lady that became one of my best friends, but she talked about all this angel stuff, and, you know, I really didn't quite go for that, but she was nice all right. enough. And Hold this thought for a second. We're going to need to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to hear about the angel lady. And, uh, and then we'll see what Sandra's path was. And I am eager to hear what all you uncovered. So stay with us, everybody. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with Sandra Champlain this week. And she's live. You're live, girl. And, uh, and so we are uh, just chatting here for a little bit, and then we're going to take caller questions. We've got a whole bunch of callers lined up, so we'll see what their questions are. By the way, Sandra's website is wedontdie.com, and I guess you can find anything you need to know about Sandra and all her offerings and programs and classes and books and shows and Everything Sandra is on we don't die dot com. Mm-hmm. Terrific. Really? Okay. Before the break, we were talking about uh, that you met a woman and she started talking about angels. So please continue with that story. Right. Yeah, and I didn't really buy too much into it, but she gave me a deck of angel cards. And I thought, well, these are cute, but of course, any message you pull, you can find a way to fit it into your life. But some strange things started happening. I would know the card that I would pull out before I pulled it out. And so that was a psychic thing, but I didn't think I had any psychic abilities, if there was even psychic abilities. And one of the cards that I pulled out said music and working, cooking. I never really listened to music because I was too busy working, but I decided to have a radio on in the background. Well, I started knowing songs that would come on the radio before they came on. So all of a sudden, I'm thinking there's more to this than meets the eye. There really is something, not thinking about the angels, but about psychic ability. And so I decided to be very bold and take a course in mediumship because I wanted the afterlife to be real, to calm my fears of dying, but I really didn't think it was possible. So that's the way I knew how to do it was to take a course in it, right? Who does that? Me. And the instructor had said, if you're in this course, you're meant to be there, you're a medium, and I thought, okay, yeah, here we go, you know, and so several thousand dollars later, I show up at a beautiful retreat center in California, and we were given just the basics of medium communication and and how it works, but of course, my skeptical mind kept saying, this is crazy, and then I was looking at the people I was with, and they were wearing the long angel gowns, and seemed like gypsies, and I thought, oh boy, am I in the wrong place. Anyways, the instruction was to find a partner and to uh, practice what a medium reading would be. Now, she says we weren't really going to do an exercise here, but these are just the things that happen during a medium reading. I said, okay. So she says, for this, we just want you to use your imagination. So she had us create kind of a safe bubble of light around us, filled with love. And she says, got to respect the people in the afterlife, introduce yourself to them. And she says, but for this exercise, just make up that there's a person standing behind your partner. She says, close your eyes. You'll feel more comfortable. So I feel like I'm creative being a chef. So I went first. And so with my partner, a lady I'd never met before, In my imagination, I imagined her grandfather, 
imagined that it would be on her mom's side. I got a vision in my mind of a fishing boat. So I'm telling her the story that it's your grandfather. He's a fisherman. Um, I'm feeling Denmark, so I throw that out there. And his name was Jan. And he had a big gap between his front teeth and blonde hair, blue eyes. And Julie, in my imagination, I created him smoking a cigarette and coughing. So I'm telling her he died of lung cancer. And so I sum it all up. And then I got this strong feeling that he never told his daughter, which would be her mother, that he loved her. And the message was, could you go home and tell mom that he's with her and he loves her? So anyways, I opened my eyes like, okay, it's your turn to practice. And the woman is crying, the streams of tears coming down her cheeks. And she says, indeed, her grandfather's name was Jan. He was a fisherman in Denmark. He fit the description. Yes, he died of lung cancer. And she affirmed that he was very hard on his daughter and never did say, I love you. And in that moment, Julie, my entire life changed because if mediumship were real, certainly it wouldn't be something I possessed, right? Who am I is what I thought. And that gave me just a little taste. And then this lady turned to me and without knowing what she was doing either, she brought in some details about my grandfather and Oh, the floodgates just opened up. Of, I want to learn more. What else is possible? And then my fear of death just started being dialed down as I went on this journey. Well, I think you're a great example, as are all of us who dip our toes into this. And in my class, a lot of people take my training, my angelic attendant training, and they say, oh, I'm never going to be able to do this, but I'm just interested, like you did. I'm just interested in seeing what this is. Everybody can do it right out of the chute. We all come in with the ability. It's just a matter of developing and enhancing it. And I think you're a great example of exactly that. So so you left there, and then what was the next, what were the next series of events that transpired that got you on this 20-year path of, you're kind of like an archaeologist to be, to see if there, if you can uncover, you know, is there really life after death? Yeah, a lot of reading and studying things like remote viewing and took a course on that. So that's more of the psychic and learning about near-death experiences. But the next hands-on thing I did was electronic voice phenomena. That's EVP, and that is recording the sound of nothing or uh, raindrops or a fan blowing and to play it back and hear voices. And I felt, Julie, that I wanted to share about the mediumship but I was too afraid because more often than not in that weekend class, I was wrong. When I was okay with being wrong and I was just free to explore and use my imagination, that's when I was right. But, you know, I, I was too afraid. And I don't think mediumship and fear can be living in the same place at the same time. Well, exactly. And I think that fear thing, what it does is it gets you into a lower vibration. Fear is a low vibration. So you're not on the same frequency as spirit when that happens. When we come back, we're going to hear more about Sandra's story, deciding that we really don't die. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. Stay with us and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This week, I am so thrilled to have Sandra Champlain on with us this evening, and she's just an extraordinary gal, and I've been a big fan of hers for years, so it's really, I'm just tickled that you were able to join us. And you can find out more about Sandra at wedontdie.com, wedontdie.com. So Sandra, you were talking about how you went to this training to learn how to be a medium. How did you choose that training? What was it that led you there for to fly all the way from the East Coast out to California? Is it just because California seems to be more in tune with woo-woo? Uh, no, it wasn't. I tried to do some research, and I, I wanted somebody reputable, and um, I won't get into names because she's no longer in the business, but I just 
followed my my instinct, I guess you'd say, and I was challenged because she said if you attend this course, you are somebody who is a medium. So in one hand, I wanted it to be true, but in the other hand, I thought there's no way. So the only way I could do it was to actually fly out there and try it. But can I talk a little bit about my electronic voice phenomena experience? Absolutely. Please, yes. Please explain what it is, yes. Oh, thanks. Yeah, um, electronic voice phenomena is using a tape recorder and recording sounds of something. It could be static from a radio signal or it could be um, running water, raindrops, the fan blowing. And I heard about people doing these recordings in actually a spiritualist church. And in spiritualism, the ministers are mediums. So it wasn't some paranormal thing. And I couldn't believe the evidence, what this minister was talking about. Her and her husband had both had children from previous marriages that were in the spirit world, and they left their house with a fan running and left a tape recorder on, and they played for the congregation what was on that tape recorder when they came back in the house, and it was, Mommy and Daddy, don't be scared. We're still here with you, with laughter. And I just was so moved. I still get goosebumps thinking of it. And so I did some research. There's a couple named Tom and Lisa Butler who wrote a book, There Is No Death and There Are No Dead, and it's about recording these voices. And so as miracles have it, on one weekend I was free and I felt like going on a retreat, and I look at the retreat center and Tom and Lisa Butler were there teaching electronic voice phenomena. So again, I'm following all these breadcrumbs that are put in my path And over the course of a weekend, we learned that the spirit world can learn. They have to learn how to do this, but how can learn how to manipulate sounds within a recording and make voices out of them. It's not easy. It's something we need to really practice listening for, and they need to practice doing it. And so they played plenty of examples of things we could hear that were just so impressive. And on the last night of class, I... I really believed in EVPs, and I really wanted to share about the afterlife. But again, like I said, I was wrong so much in those medium, in the medium class that I didn't want to share about that. And I just thought if I could really hear something and I could share my belief in the afterlife, then I wanted it to be real. So I went into my cabin that night, and there was a humongous amount of rain coming down. And I pictured my grandmother and grandfather and aunt and uncle, the only close dead people I knew, and I imagined them in my room, and I didn't know if they were there or they weren't, but I held out my recorder and I said, if you guys are real, and this is real, and I'm meant to help people believe in the afterlife, I said, I really need you to try to speak loud into my recorder. And then I'll say good night. So literally, Julie, I let it record just a minute. And then into my recorder, I said, good night. So what typically happens is one uploads their recording into a computer and then replays it over and over and over again to try to make out voices from the background sounds. That's what typically happens. I didn't have a computer with me, but I just had my headphones and I put them on. And when I played the recording, and I mean, I can picture it. It was second counter second number 46 that I was flooded with goosebumps because what was recorded that I could hear with my own ears was, good night, Sandra, in a man's voice. Two women whisper, good night, good night, and then another deep voice says, good night. And boy, to take it from a hope of the afterlife to now, holy cow, I'll say, because I really got the feeling that I wasn't alone. They were right there with me. And I played it over and over and over again, half excited, half scared, because then I thought, do we have no privacy? You know, is there a world within my world right now? But the good news is I went and I brought that recording to class the next day. And, of course, the people in that class were mainly grieving parents. And even though they didn't get a recording, and I did, it told them there really was something to this. So very 
privately, I started just sharing about electronic voice phenomena, and it didn't matter if people didn't believe, because I'd say, let's try to do a recording, and I, re- I heard some amazing things. Um, one poor lady who was actually in prison when her father had passed, and I had met her at a conference, and we did a recording. I knew nothing about her, and what I heard in the recording was, hello, Deirdre, I love you. So easy to talk now, easy to breathe. Now, the father had had a tracheotomy and held the device to his throat. And um, anyways, it it changed this woman's life, knowing that the father was there with her. And I mean, I got dozens of stories of of those kind of things. But those are the times that I realized that this information changes lives and gives people their lives back. Because you know people can die internally when they're grieving. Well, exactly. I have a graduate of my angelic attendant training who does EVPs, and she lost her little boy when he was, I think, four or five. And I've heard several of the recordings that she's done of her son. And he always says, hi, mommy. And you can hear him on the recording, and he always starts like that. He's always like, hi, mommy. It, it is just the sweetest thing. Also, we had Sonia Rinaldi on last year, and she's a scientist who not only, she started out with the voice recordings, but now she does image recordings. And and she has some kind of steam or, or incense or smoke or something, because they need some kind of a background to be able to materialize their image in that. And why do you think that is? Why is it that they need that spirits, the energy needs some kind of a background for an image or like the rain coming down for your grandparents and aunt and uncle to converse with you? Yeah. I think with audio or visual or something, they need something to work with. You know, if an artist is looking at a blank canvas, he needs or she needs paint to be able to produce something that we can enjoy. I think um, the steam or other things that Sonia uses, I know Sonia very well, and we are producing a film called Rinaldi, a documentary about her, which is actually coming out February 22nd, Julie, which is very exciting. And I you must can be psychic or something. I didn't even know. And I bring, I her, think I'm bringing you, her up. Yeah, we are. Wow. Yeah, we don't do films. It's our very first documentary that we're doing. And I know you've said the website, we don't die.com, but everyone can look at the site around that time because we'll be doing a very special showing with Sonia and people can watch it with us. But they need something. And as far as Sonia goes, I was so amazed with what she can do. And I met her actually way back in my journey when it first started happening. Um, back in 2006, I met her for the first time, just briefly, having no idea that I would meet her and have her speak at my live conferences and, and do so much. But some of the pictures that she's done, she's filmed static uh, energy, I guess you'd call it. She has a, if you can imagine, a clear Easter egg and four video projectors that are all putting static into it, like static that you'd see on a TV channel that's, you know, you get the static. And out of that, she's working with her scientists in the unseen world, and there are different parents that she knows who's um, connected with her, and she'll just have the intention that these kids can come through and say hello to their mom or dad. And sometimes she does recordings, and she uses the sound, instead of raindrops, she'll use chopped up human sound, you know, so that they can actually rearrange the sound molecules into words. But in the case of the videos, somehow they rearrange it and they're able to put their pieces on it. And uh, sometimes the faces change slightly and go from no smile to smile. There There are pictures that parents know that they're their children, however, they're not pictures that have actually been taken and one of the biggest times I got goosebumps in my life is I've said to my dad many times 
if you could just go to Brazil, Dad, and find this woman and try to get your face and whatever experiment she's doing. And with one of the group of unknown photos that Sonia had sent to me, sure enough, there was a picture of my dad not looking how he looked. He passed at 74, looking very poorly, but he was young, like in his 20s when he was in the Air Force. Oh, my goodness. How fabulous. All right. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, I want to find out what's the most surprising thing you found in your research. So stay with us, everybody. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show, and we'll see what Sandra has to say when we get back. Welcome back, everybody. We've got Sandra Champlain with us this week, and she is the author of the best-selling book, We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death, and she's the host of We Don't Die Radio. I love your branding. Everything's We Don't Die. And then she's got WeDon'tDie.com, where you can find everything. So good job for a chef to be so good at branding. I'm impressed. Before the break, I asked what was the most surprising thing that you found in your research and to piggyback onto that, how do you find that it helps alleviate the fear of death for people who are very afraid? Okay, I'll tell you. First of all, the runner-up is meeting a medium who is also an artist who not only gave me the most on-the-spot evidence of my dad and my grandmother, but she was drawing and she drew a picture of my dad, what he looked like, again, in his 20s, back in the Air Force days. Those spirit artists are amazing. But I would have to say, uh, meeting a gentleman by the name of Scott Milligan, who I never knew there was something called trance mediumship. I've heard of people that channeled, but, you know, that was so far out that I had a real hard time getting my head around it. And Scott is someone who is a medium, but through the last... 25 years or so, has quieted his mind enough in reverence with the spirit world to allow his, I don't want to say their guides, but his spirit friends work with him to be able to deliver, deliver messages through him. So some of the messages are, are working mediumistically, but some of them are the most fascinating words of comfort about life, death, and the afterlife. And every Friday, we do a live Zoom room with people be comfort free or leave a donation to witness this but i was so impressed with what this trance was that i flew to england to the arthur finley college which is a college of psychic and mediumship and spent two weeks sitting in this power to just see if the spirit world wanted to use me and now what the instructor said is it could be 1% spirit world, 99% Sandra, but just go with it. And there were different things that we did. And by the end of the time that I was there, I had courage to give this a try in front of the whole group. And I don't know if there were 20 people in the class, but we all sat and everybody sent me love and energy and things like that. And I just closed my eyes and did the practice that they told us to do and said, you know, whoever my guide or loved one is in the spirit world, if they wanted to use me and talk through me, they could. I felt comfortable with this group, and I thought, I'll never have this chance again, so just try it. And, Julie, I was concentrating on my breath, but my mouth was speaking. And I felt myself turning to all the people in the circle like I was telling some kind of story But I kept having those holy cow moments because it was so hard for me to think this is real. And every time I startled myself, I stopped talking. Once I just paid attention to my breath, the words started coming out. And when it was over, the people in the circle were all clearing their eyes from tears. They were so moved, apparently through my own voice, but was talking about life being a journey, but in great detail, as if a ship ship on the water. And I said to them, they said, how was it for you? And I said, well, I just felt myself turning and moving. And they said, Sandra, you stayed perfectly still. And so for me, Julie, that was the most surprising thing, because whether it was a spirit person or my own 
soul speaking, that we can tap into that. And since then, I mean, people can try to do this and slow down and use their hand and just write, write the words that come to mind. And sometimes the most beautiful poetry or stories come out, but I'm not creating them. There is definitely an internal force within each one of us. So for me, that is absolutely the most surprising thing. I agree. And I always say that all books, all songs, all movie scripts, all paintings, everything's channeled. And I don't know about you, but when I was writing Angelic Attendance, there were times when I would write things and and then I'd go back and read them later and I'd say, oh, this is pretty good. I don't even remember writing this. Did you have the same thing happen to you? Well, absolutely. It- I didn't notice it when I was writing my book, but after the fact, when I was looking back, sometimes I just kind of forgot where I was and things just flowed. And I heard a great quote somewhere that said, God will work with you, but not for you. And I think the actual um, action of us doing something, you know, that we want to do, it's like this unseen force will come in and help us. And especially if it's done with love and passion, or if you're out to help other people, it's there for you. So whatever you want to call it, but you just tend to lose yourself. People feel like they're in the zone. And I think that's really when we're tied in with this higher intelligence. I agree. And I am a great example because I have a communications degree and I'm an inventor of surgical devices sold throughout the world. And people say, how's that work? Are you a nurse? Are you a doctor? Are you an engineer? And I said, no, but I know how to talk to them and I know how to hire engineers, but I'm the idea girl. I The ideas came to me for the inventions. My name's on the patents, you know, that kind of thing. And the most important thing I always say is you can invent whatever you want, but the most important part is you got to figure out how to sell it because <laughs> it's not worth much if you can't sell it. So I think that's a great example, too, of I channeled that information before I was doing any woo-woo stuff. I mean, I hadn't started any of this quest mm-hmm. for myself. And and I, I think in all areas of our lives, whether it be business or composing music or writing books or or movies or, uh, my gosh, any kind of artist, architects, it's just endless. We're all channeling divine guidance and divine ideas. Absolutely, we are. And you had asked me about grief and living life. There's something that happens when we grieve, when we have a loved one who has passed, no matter what we believe, we're all going to go through grief. And I want to just recommend, if people want a copy of my book or my audio book, at that We Don't Die store page, just scroll down. You can use coupon code FREE, F-R-E-E. Chapter 10 is How to Survive Grief because it, it is brutal. But there are things we can do to make ourselves feel better, to get some of the healthy the neurotransmitters and things happening within ourselves. But when we can really understand that our loved ones are still around, we can keep that relationship going. Terrific. Okay, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to take some callers, and Sandra and I are going to tag team them. So if you have a question about the afterlife or grief or how to integrate all of this into your life to live a life of more joy, stay with us because we're going to get to that next. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We have Sandra Champlain with us this week, and we, as promised, are going to take callers questions here in a second. Just wanted to remind everybody, we do this show every Thursday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. The call-in number is 667-770-1476, and the access code is 483-620-POUND. Now, this information is available on my website, askjulieryan.com, and in the show notes anywhere you download podcasts. 
We also post information to remind you to call in the day of the show on all my social media channels, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest. And you can download this show on any podcast channel. We're also on YouTube. So look at it there. If you go to ratethispodcast.com forward slash Julie and leave a review, you will be entered into a drawing for a free session with me. And I give one away the first of every month, the first Thursday of every month. So next Thursday will be the winter time. So go to ratethispodcast.com forward slash Julie and uh, and leave a review. And you may be the lucky winner. I always feel like I'm on a game show, Sandra, when I'm doing that. I'm like, behind door number three is is an hour session with me, something like that. You can schedule an appointment with me, speaking of hour sessions, at AskJulieRyan.com. Information on my classes are there. You can link to my books, all of that. Okay, each week, Sandra, we get a question that is chosen from somebody who submitted it online, and I read it on the air because sometimes people are working or they can't they can't join us so this one comes from sammy and sammy lives in naperville illinois and she said hi julie thanks to you and your podcast for giving me hope for the afterlife and the ability to live a fuller life today my dad tragically died in a work-related accident in the 70s just a month before i was born he was only 20 years old Since then, I've felt his presence by my side, guiding and encouraging me. Can you ask him if he has something you would like to tell me? I've never actually been able to communicate with him, and all I have are a few pictures and stories shared by family. Thank you ever so kindly. This would mean so much to me. Sammy. And here's my response. Hi, Sammy. I'm delighted to hear the messages I received from Spirit provide hope and comfort to you. In addition, it's wonderful you feel your dad's presence, guidance, and encouragement and recognize it's him. We all have the ability to perceive the spirits of our deceased loved ones. It's just most of us don't recognize it. To get some answers for you, I energetically connected through you to your dad. Here's what he wants you to know. You will always be his precious baby girl. Your career is on a trajectory to soar if you just believe in yourself. Your fear of hurting other people's feelings holds you back. You don't have a malicious bone in your body, and if you keep your and others' best interests in mind, you'll do just fine. Figure out a way to share your point of view in a way that conveys your thoughts and beliefs and trust your superiors will appreciate your input. He loves and will always love you and appreciates how you love those around you. He was very chatty when I was talking with him about this. And then I went on to say, sounds like you have some career opportunities happening. He was all about your career. Our deceased loved ones are always close by and readily available. To converse with your dad, just think of and say something to him either silently or aloud. His answer will immediately come into your head and feel like it's your thought. If you think about his answer for longer than a couple of seconds, that'll be your brain talking to you. The more you talk with your dad or any spirit, the more answers you'll receive and the more validation you'll get. That'll help you trust the information you're given and talking with any spirit will become second nature to you. It's really that easy. Hope you find these messages from your dad helpful. So thanks, Sammy, for submitting that question. I thought it was perfect that that was the question chosen for our topic this week. But don't you find that the more that you do this, Sandra, this work, that the more validation you get, and then you just learn to trust it, and then it just flows, and it's so much easier once you just practice it for a while. Absolutely, and I think it's human to think we can't do it, and it's really second nature. If anyone wants to look at a picture of your loved one and just feel love, you know, I think our loved ones are very excited that we want to work with them, but just to trust. And I know for myself, when I wake up in the morning or just before I go to bed at night, when I'm 
between sleepy, but yet I'm still awake. I know one time I was talking to my dad and it was really beautiful because, you know, I was like, are you really there kind of a thing? And Julie, in just an instant, it was like I had a slideshow presentation in my mind of all the things that, or many of the things that dad and I did together. And there's no way I could create that on my own. So don't be so quick to brush off things like it was just your imagination because the spirit world uses our imagination to communicate. You know, when you feel that love, that's them. If you start feeling scary stuff or feeling bad, that could be our subconscious mind. So uh, there's just love that comes from the spirit world. I agree 100%. Okay, let's go to the phones. Our first caller is Jolene. Hi, Jolene. Hi. 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 Hi, where are you located? Um, the Phoenix area. Okay, terrific. You got a question for Sandrix, Sandra and me? Sandrix, Phoenix, Sandrix, Sandrix and me? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, um, my niece died about three years ago, and I, I miss her terribly, and I just would like any message, or is she at peace, or does she have any messages for us here? What's her name, Jolene? Matea. Matea. Okay. All right. Sandra, you want to go first? Yeah. Well, I don't do messages, um, although I've done some training in mediumship. Julie would be more than one task for that. But what I do know is when our loved ones pass, they're in a reality that's very similar to what we have. Um, she was greeted by loved ones. Even if there were pets in the family, they're there, too. There's people to love her and be with her. Time is different there than it is here. So for here, it could seem like, well, it is three years here, but for her, it's just a blink of an eye. She's with you. She can feel your love. She can watch what you're doing and be very much a part of your life got to be frustrating for them because they can try with all their might to say i'm still here with you but sometimes with our busy mind we can't feel that but she's in a beautiful place surrounded by love and she's she's still with you i i like the phrase hereafter as opposed to heaven because they're vibrating around us in a world that we just can't see but they're very very close to us julie okay yeah, I what I got, jo- what I got, Jolene, was uh, that Matea it wants you to live a life of joy. She said she lives a life of joy. Did she like to dance when she was alive? She says there's a lot. She does a lot of dancing, and it's really fun. She's showing me it's just pure joy. She's showing me herself dancing. Was she a dancer? Did she take dancing? What's up with the dancing? Yeah, uh, she she did like dancing, and she was also in color guard. So, like twirling and dancing. That's what she's doing. She's dancing like it, it almost reminded me of a, um, not a flamenco dancing, but she's got this skirt that twirls and she's having fun twirling with it because you know how Ginger Rogers and the dancers of, of the golden age of Hollywood, they would twirl and their, their skirts would twirl up with it and she's she's just having a big time so she's saying she's her existence is full of joy she wants your existence to be full of joy too there is no reason to be sad she is living a, a more joyful existence than she ever thought was possible and she's dancing her she's dancing her tail off which is so cute so i hope that helps comfort you jolene thanks for her calling let's go to christopher next Hi, Christopher. Hi, Christopher. You there? Hello, 563 area code. Okay, well, let's try somebody else then. Let's go to Catherine next. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Hi, thanks. Um, Oh, I'm so excited. I have so many questions. Where are you located, Catherine? Um, just outside of Philadelphia, Bucks County, in the northern okay. sub of Philadelphia. Terrific. Got a question um, for us? I always heard that, yeah, I do. I have a couple. I always heard that after 
we passed, we had jobs. Um, and my two-year-old granddaughter was very sight. Well, we all are. All the women in my family seem to be. But she used to always talk about my mother, her grandmother, taking care of babies, and that was her job. And, I mean, she would describe things in detail. And, and I was always very curious about that. Is that... Is that what we have after we die? Do we have jobs, uh, you know, of things that we would like to do, happy jobs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful <laughs> thing she said, too. Yeah. I tell you, out of the mouth of babes, so much comes yep. out. But, yeah, we can continue our life. We can take a break, certainly, but I think, you know, Spirit world and service go hand in hand. People understand that they can make a difference and help out wherever they can. So we can choose jobs. We can choose playtime. Uh, I was told my grandmother is a greeter and little old Grammy. She loves people. Oh, wow. So, But the answer, yeah, absolutely. We can continue our lives however we wish. That's and then, right. Catherine, I'm going to hold you over for the break. When we come back, I'll give you my two cents. So stay with us, everybody, and we'll talk some more with Catherine and Sandra when we come back. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. Stay with us. Welcome back. We've got Sandra Champlain with us this week, and we were talking with Catherine before the break. And Catherine, we were talking about uh, do people have jobs in heaven? Here's my take on it, and I've heard this from endless amounts of spirits, that in heaven, it doesn't take any time, because time doesn't exist in the spirit world, but it doesn't take any time to manifest something. We have a thought, it immediately materializes. So if it's something that you want to do that you want to take care of babies, you can do that instantly. If you want to ski the Matterhorn, you can do that. If you want to go on a safari in Africa, you can do that. If you want to learn about ancient civilizations, you can do that not only with absorbing information, but also visiting those civilizations. So that's what I've heard over and over again. And and Sandra, you were talking about a slideshow that your dad was showing you in your mind. That's what I'll see from spirit when we're talking with a deceased loved one. I'm I'm with a client and we're talking with a deceased loved one. And it'll it'll be like an old fashioned slideshow. Okay, I'm skiing down the Alps one and then the next slide is on Safari in Africa. So that's my understanding of it, Catherine. And and I think it's interesting that your granddaughter is seeing all of that. And that's what my children's books, the Angel Messages series are all about, is to help explain that to little children in a way that it's easily understood. So check those out. Angel Messages for Kids, Angel Messages for Dogs, and Angel Messages for Cats is the newest one. So check that out. Hope that helps, Catherine. Am I allowed to ask one more? Well, I'm going to hold you over. And if we have time, I'll come back to you. How about that? Thanks for calling. Sure, thank you. All right, you bet. Let's go to Kathy next. Hi, Kathy. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? Hi, Kathy. Hi. Where um, are you located? I'll see you guys tonight. Uh, I'm in the west end of Illinois. Um, okay. Turn the- yeah. right, you got a question and for us? We had messaged. Yes, we had messaged back and forth, um, and I wanted to tell you that I had several incidents um, with seeing, not seeing, but hearing about mom who had passed on St. Patrick's Day. And um, one was at my retirement dinner at Thanksgiving, and a friend who was there said that she saw a silver orb come into the room and kind of spin around us, you know. And um, I knew instantly that it was her because she was always wanting me to retire and, you know, we could do creative things together. But um, that night I had a dream that was so vivid that it was her and my dad. And we were at, um, well, there is a long story, but anyway, um, she took me back to see what the other side was like. And... um, it was just so interesting and something I wrote down and will probably never forget, you know. But I wondered if 
you guys would be able to tell um, if she had been with me because I had just had a major surgery, open heart surgery. And I was hoping that I would be able to sense her. And, you know, throughout everything, I just couldn't. <laughs> so um, is that something that you could tell me? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm doing an instant replay, like when you're watching a football game. <laughs> you know, they do an instant replay of the touchdown. I'm watching that as you're talking. And yeah, yeah, she was with you in surgery. She was with you in the recovery room. She was with you in the hospital. She's with you now. Absolutely. I can see her by your bedside in the recovery room. She's on your right side. She's at your right shoulder, and she's using her left hand to, to basically stroke your brow you know she's like stroking your head your forehead and your and oh, your me? brow <laughs> to comfort you yeah. yeah Sandra anything that you want to share with Kathy well I just think you're very lucky Kathy because I can't tell you how many people want to have a dream and mm-hmm. those visions and dreams and there are times that you are awake that seem so real and they don't leave your mind like a normal dream I forget about it when I wake up but those visitations are so clear and I do think it's in the time that we're have the most fear and most worry or if Mm -hmm. you're in the hospital or something like that that they will move heaven and earth to get through and so while you might not physically feel her because I don't really always feel my dad to be honest with you but visually I will get these visions and so some of us are stronger at hearing some of us are stronger at feeling some of us are stronger visually so that might be the way she comes through but be open and um but no doubt she's with you no doubt oh I I do feel it um so I I appreciate that but yeah. Yeah. Well, you I hope to you, thank you for your I help. hope you feel better and heal quickly. Quick story, one of my best friends when she got her doctorate, her mother had died a few months before she was getting her doctorate and they were lining up getting ready to process in. She was in her cap and gown and all of that and and she said, I saw my mother walk by and she said, I knew it was her spirit because she was dressed in a summer suit and she had her white purse and her white shoes. And this was December. And there's no way that woman would get be caught dead wearing white after Labor Day, white shoes after Labor Day, because she was, you know, born in the in the like about 1918 or something. And that was the thing back then was you just you just didn't even think about wearing white shoes after Labor Day. And so she called me and she said, her name was Betty and the mother's name was Betty. And the funny thing is, Sandra, I went with my friend Angela to the funeral home when Betty died because before the viewing, before the wake, she said, you know, I want to go check to make sure everything's all set. And then she looks good in the casket. And she said, you're the only one I can think of to take with me that would be game to do it. And I said, absolutely. She showed up in the outfit she was wearing in the casket. At Angela's graduation. So is that a riot? Wearing her white shoes and carrying her white purse in December. (laughs) So I think that's a great great example of, you know, spirit. Not only do they show us things that we'll recognize, but also they have an amazing sense of humor. And they just spread joy whenever They they show up. Yeah. Alrighty, stay with us, everybody. We're going to be right back, and we'll take more callers. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show, and we have Sandra Champlain with us this week. So hang in there with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We've got Sandra Champlain with us this week. She's at wedontdie.com. Everything you ever wanted to know about Sandra is at wedontdie.com. And things that aren't there, you can learn in her book. You'll learn a lot more about her if you get her We Don't Die book. And it's terrific. I think I read it a couple of years ago. Sandra, really, I two or three years ago, maybe, you know, I've been I've been one of your admirers from afar for a long time. So uh, I I highly recommend to anyone that hasn't read her book yet to pick it up. It's really terrific. Her her We Don't Die book. Okay, let's go back to the phones. We've got Kristen next. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Julie. 
Hi, where are you? Lo- where are you located? Hi, in California. Okay, terrific. Got a question for us? Yes, um, I lost my mom on December eighteenth, and I kind of was wondering if there's any message for my dad. And when she was in the coma, I kept reminding her that she needs to send us some messages. And I was just wondering what sort of messages or how could she, how would we know? You want to go first, Sandra, on that one? How's she going to know that her mom's communicating with her? I, first and foremost, I'm so sorry about your mom. I... uh, no matter when it happens, no matter how old somebody is, it's, it's, it's just not good. You know, it hurts. It's, grief is a terrible, awful thing that we all have to go through. So very, most importantly, is really be gentle with yourself. I think when we're going through the grieving process, it's hard really to be sensitive. And I'm sure your mom mm-hmm. is doing everything she can to let you know she's with you. And I, I think when we get to the spirit world, we'll know how tough it is to really communicate. But first and foremost, be gentle with yourself and keep, I know you talk to her all the time and you have probably her picture everywhere, but just keep that relationship going from your side. And when you feel that love, and even if you just picture yourself on a park bench with her and let her, those feelings from her come through. And the thing is, you have to trust that that is her. The mind will want to you're making it up. But the more you do it, the stronger you'll feel it. Julie? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what came through, Kristen, was she wants your dad to be sure and take his vitamins. <laughs> and she said, especially C and D3. Oh. She said, with all this this sickness going around, you know, not only with COVID, but also just because of the time of year that he, he that he really needs to to remember to take his vitamins. Does that mean anything to you? Does he revolt in taking vitamins? What's up with that? No, he forgets. He forgets. Okay, so did she stay on him to take his vitamins when she was alive? Um, not in the end because he was taking care of getting her to get the vitamins because she had Alzheimer's and she would kind of forget. Okay. All right. Well, she's talking about vitamins. So there you go. And, and I agree with Sandra that it's, it's hard for spirit to communicate sometimes because our reality is so dense. And sometimes when we see a spirit and and I have people send me pictures and the spirit looks distorted. It's not because the spirit's scary. It's because they're trying to get through our dense reality. It's kind of like back in the day, bank robbers used to put a pair of pantyhose over their face so that they wouldn't be recognizable. And that's kind yeah. of what it looks like, you know, is that when they're coming through. The other thing to remember, too, is what I mentioned with the gal who had submitted the question online, that in order to talk to your mom, all you have to do is just think of her, because our heads are big satellite dishes, and they receive and they transmit frequencies, and every spirit has a frequency they keep throughout all their lifetimes. So you just think of her. She immediately comes in, and then you just say something to her, either a question or a statement. She's going to answer you. It's going to be like a second in your head. And if you think about it for more than a couple of seconds, that's going to be your brain talking to you. The other analogy that I like to make, Kristen, is did you ever watch Bewitched? As a kid, the TV show. Are you old enough to remember yeah. Bewitched? Favorite. <laughs> remember, remember how Samantha Stevens. For those of you that don't that don't know what I'm talking about, it was a TV show about a witch who married a, a human, a mortal. They called him, and she would yell "mother," and her mother and Dora would come in immediately, or Uncle Arthur, or Doctor Bombay. And that's how it works. I I laugh because I always think whoever wrote the screenplay for Bewitched knew woo woo. And that's really how it works. You think of her, she immediately comes in. If you are doing something random like I don't know, folding laundry or walking down the road thinking of something else, and all of a sudden she comes in your mind, that's her letting you know that she's right there with you. 
So, yeah, practice that. You'll you'll be amazed at how often healthy. she's around. She's healthy, she's whole, okay. she's well, and anyone who has any sicknesses or any ailments, everybody's re- restored to perfect health, and we get to pick our perfect age, too. So she's happy, healthy, and well. Exactly. So I hope that helps comfort you, Kristen. Thanks for calling. Okay, let's see who's next. Looks like Pina. Hi, Pina. Hi, Julie. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Pina. Hello, hello. Please tell everyone where you're located. Thanks for all you do, ladies. Thanks for bringing so much love and peace to people's hearts. I'm in Pennsylvania in Lanhorn. All right. You got a question for us? Thank you. Um, I just want to see if I have any messages from my husband. He passed away in 2016. What's his name? Stephen. Stephen. If you could ask him anything, what would you ask him? Are you around me, honey? I miss you so much. I get all the time. He's talking about, do you wear pink a lot? He's talking about he loves it when you wear pink. What Do you do you wear pink? Does, was that his favorite color to see you in? Uh, what's, what's going on with the pink outfits? Maybe for him. I'm okay. not sure. Um, I've been wearing pink a lot lately, yes. But not, <laughs> nothing special, you know, just because. I just grab and put it on, <laughs> but yeah, recently. So yeah, he's probably. saying he likes you to. He likes to see you wearing mm-hmm. pink. So he's telling you he's around you all the time because he sees you wearing pink. You just validated that he's around you all the time. Good job, Sandra. What, you got anything you want to add? Oh, not message wise, but love never dies. And I tell you what, we don't want to rush your life, Pena. We don't, but. That man walks by your side in that moment that you take your last breath. Long time from now, he will be right there to greet you. But while you're here, there's things that you can do with your body and with your soul and really to live life. And I think the message that comes through so much is how important it is to live life here on Earth and really make the most of our experience. So let your light shine, whatever you're passionate about, do. I really feel you're somebody that helps other people, that makes other people feel good. So do your best to keep letting your light shine because you you brighten people's day, Pina. Thank you, Sandra. I'm a nurse, so yeah. There you go. (laughs) Well, and along those lines, I use the analogy a lot of spirit just knows how to do one thing, and that's send love. That's all they know how to do. That's all they can do is send love. And I use the analogy of it's like the sun. To your point, Sandra, the sun knows how to do one thing, and that's shine. The sun doesn't care if it's raining where you are, if it's hot, if it's cold, if you're inside, if you're outside. It doesn't matter. The sun's just going to shine. And that's what spirit does is the spirit just sends love. It's all they know how to do. And this whole thing about evil spirits and all that kind of jazz, I always say that is been propagated by religions and cultures to control the masses. Because what's the number one way to control people? Fear, right? I mean, we've been living under it for the last two years with all this COVID stuff. How, what, everybody's been so afraid. And, uh, and so... All spirit knows how to do is love. All spirits are pure love. No matter how awful their personality was when they were alive in human form, that snarky personality stays with the body when somebody dies. The spirit is always pure love. Anything you want to add to that? No, absolutely right. And we all have that light shining within us. And it's so easy when we're grieving to not feel it. And it feels like we have a dark cloud over us, but do some of the things you enjoy doing, be with people, listen to music that you enjoy, read a book, do some journaling and just visualize that light growing bigger and bigger. You, 
everyone listening right now or watching is a, your beautiful soul. You're one of a kind and just really let your light shine. Well, and to that point, too, just to, just to jump off of that point, Sandra, I, I tell people all the time, everybody's valuable because every experience that we have is a one-time experience. It has never happened before. It will never happen again to you at this moment in time in this circumstance. And it all contributes to the collective consciousness, which helps us all expand. So everybody's valuable. Every situation's valuable that we go through. All righty, we're going to take one more quick break. When we come back, we'll see who's next. I believe it's Mary. We'll see what Mary has to say. Stay with us, everybody. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show, and we'll return in a minute. Welcome back. Sandra Champlain and I are are here with you this week, and we're answering questions about the afterlife and grieving and how to live a life of joy. Sandra, you have a lot of things that you offer people. Please tell everybody about some of the different programs you have available and how they can access them. Oh, thanks for letting me share. First of all, reminder, home base is we don't die. Dot com. If you go to the store page, there's lots of demonstrations and courses and things coming up. But if you scroll down to the We Don't Die audio book and use coupon code FREE, F-R-E-E, you can be my guest and listen to the audio book and you can actually read the PDF book also there. One thing that we do since COVID hit, my friends and I got together, and how can we give back? And every Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 Pacific, we do what's called a Sunday gathering. And it's not really a church service, but it is a powerful thing. We have a topic of the week, and we have music videos. We fill it with inspiration, and part of every Sunday is a medium demonstration. So it's no cost to you. We hold it in a Zoom and your loved ones could come through. And even if they don't, you you get to see on the court that loved ones are around and we don't die. So we have weekly classes, weekly demonstrations, psychic, mediumship. You can get in touch with your own soul and um, really go on a journey. And I think that's what life's about for all of us is once we believe in the afterlife, even if we don't fully believe, we, we really have that faith but it gives us a way of looking at life. We can never fail. We're never alone. We don't die. Love is around. But I do think while we're here, we have the opportunity to live life fully and live a life we love. So we really want to empower everyone to live our best life and be in touch with our loved ones as well. So that's what we do online. Lots of good things. And, you know, we love to give. So lots of free things as well. We don't die.com, everybody. Okay, let's get Mary in here real quickly. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hey, hey Julie and Sandra. This is Mary in Hi. Florida. Hi, Mary from Florida. Uh, Got a quick yeah. question for us? It, it absolutely. Sure. Um, yeah, I am with uh, Sandra almost every Friday and Sunday afternoon, um, even you. if I'm not always uh, 100% paying attention. Sometimes I'm, you know, doing other things that I'm listening in. But, yeah, it's something I certainly look forward to every week. Um, just uh, before uh, your program started, Julie, uh, my sister reached out to me, and she brought up something about um, our dad who passed away um, to the other side nine years ago. And um, what I would like to ask uh, you both is, uh, would you uh, please um, reach through to my dad and ask him to 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 be with my son, my youngest son, and be a support to him? I cannot reach reach out to him, um, but if he can get through. To my youngest son, uh, his grandson, um, and support him through through all this struggle that he's trying to get through. Well, absolutely. absolutely. I'm sure yeah. Dad knows 
and is is with him, but we can definitely send our own prayers and intentions as well, Mary. Okay. I'm sure it's a very, okay. very tough time. I appreciate time. it. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate it. Julie? Yeah. I think yeah, he's, he's, he's around him. He's around him all the time. He's with you. What he's saying is for you to know, too, that this is your son's path. And he's learning from it. We look at situations that are tough as being horrific. And we think, why in the heck would anybody choose to go through this? But I have heard over and over and over again, and Sandra, I'm sure you have too, from Spirit, that every situation that we go through, something good is, you know, the silver linings in every cloud. And it helps our spirit expand. Our Mm -hmm. spirit, our soul, same thing. Because we create out of the contrast. When we know what we don't want, it helps us create what we do want. So even when we watch loved ones or when we ourselves are going through a tough time, if you just remember that this is benefiting him in some way, even if you and your family cannot see it at the moment, your dad wants you to know that. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Mary, bring your question tomorrow night as well for our trans demonstration and Q&A because we can ask our friend in the unseen world to answer as well. There you go. Okay. Thanks, oh, Mary. Yeah, hey, Eric, there. Todd, Todd and Eric in the yes. afternoon? Yes. Okay. All righty. <laughs> All right. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Mary. Good Welcome. luck with your son. All right, everybody. That's it for this week. What a joy, Sandra, to have you on the show. And uh, one more time, everybody, go to wedontdie.com. And check out all of Sandra's offerings and her work and and everything that she does to, you know, to help people. Any last comments or messages for everybody, Sandra? Well, thank you. And I forgot to mention, yes, there's 375 hours of interviews that I've had on all kinds of topics with great people, including Julie, all about the afterlife and living life. So you're welcome to all of those. Yeah, that's it. I really thank everyone, and please keep talking to your loved ones. Uh, They're right with you. They love you. They support you, and love never dies. It's just the biggest illusion is that we're alone, and we're not. We have loads of love right around us. Exactly. So sending you lots of love from Sweet Home, Alabama. Mwah! And Rhode Island, where Sandra is as well. And we'll be back next week with a regular show. So if you have medical questions or love life questions or dog questions or whatever, you know, a typical Ask Julie Ryan show, Sandra, they just call in about all kinds of stuff from all over the world. And we ask Spirit, and it's a blast. We have so much fun. So uh, call in next week, join us, and see you same place, same station. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend and a great week. Take care now. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com. This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.